Paul, so we were looking a little bit ago that, you know, our sun is in the center of this flat disk, but a little bit further away from the center. So, so the this... middle vertically, but two thirds of the way out horizontally. Yeah. So this begs the question, what's in the center? Now, we know there's a bar and right in the middle of the bar, there's a bulge, yep. a big collection of stars. But now let's zoom right into the middle few so light this years. So this the center part of the galaxy in that bulge in that bar. And the trouble is, this is very heavily hidden by dust clouds, yeah. so you just cannot see this invisible wavelength. So you have to go well into the infrared to have much hope of seeing anything. But here's the the center, and what you can see is all these beautiful nebulae. Yeah, it looks a lot pretty, of a lot of honest. gas over there, and that white patch down the bottom there is actually where the middle is. It's so this is the center of our Milky Way. Yes. And what we see is there's basically a ring of really dense, really massive, hot, dark molecular clouds orbiting around, and then right in the middle, a few light years, there's a clear bubble. Mm -hmm. And this clear bubble in the middle is absolutely full of stars. Okay. Huge numbers of stars, both young and old stars, wide range of mass. We only see the massive ones, we can't see the low mass ones, yeah. but they're probably there as well. Um, so you've got this huge cluster of stars, naked, if you like, in the middle, okay. and then this ring of molecules. If you look at radio, we're now looking at magnetic fields and charged particles. Okay. We can see all these filaments. These yeah, strings. these things kind of. Sh Bouncing off, shooting off. So it's telling us there's very strong magnetic fields okay. and particles spiraling along them, being blasted out. So there's a lot of energetic particles and so there's lots of magnetic there's fields. There's a lot happening here. So it's crowded and confusing. Then if we zoom right into the middle of them, we find this dense cluster of stars. And we look at the motion of these stars. Yep. So what we're seeing here, this is so-called adaptive optics, where you use fancy telescopes to de-blur the motion of the stars. And what you can see is the stars in the middle are moving really fast. And you can see they're kind of doing loop the loops around a central point here. So yeah, so the ones near the center kind of come in and they do this very quick loop out. You know, we have these ones on the outside that just kind of slowly move around. So there's something big going on in here. So it looks like right at the very center, there is something, it emits a bit of radio waves and a bits of gamma rays, Yep. but it doesn't emit light, or at least no. not very much. But what you can see is stars doing loop-the-loops around it. And here we can actually track the orbits of some of the stars around it. So we've got something that's very dark, very heavy, very small. And what does that remind you of? Sounds a lot like a black hole, Paul. That's right. So what we But it can't be small, right? In terms of mass. Well, compared to the galaxy, it's pretty small, but if you look at the orbits of these things as they loop around the center, it turns out you need something that weighs about four million times the mass of the sun. So we can kind of use the same technique that we used earlier when we were looking at the motions of stars to figure out the mass of our galaxy. We can figure out the mass of what's at the center here. That's right. So you can see what mass must be there to make these things do the loops they're doing and not just fly out. That's right. So it looks like, and it has to be very small, if it was like light years across, the stars would be inside it. That's right. So it's a very compact, relatively object. So it's a tiny, but very heavy. And indeed, we can't think of anything other than a black hole that it could be. Yep, that's right. Now, lack of imagination does not constitute a proof. All we actually know is it's something very small, very dark, and very heavy. And we can't think of anything other than a black hole that combines that small, that dark, and that heavy. But it doesn't mean there couldn't be some new law of physics that produces right. something else weird. Have, have we looked at other galaxies to give us a clue? I mean, we looked it at looks this like dark all galaxies, at least all disk galaxies and elliptical galaxies, we'll talk about elliptical galaxies in a minute, have very massive, very dense, very small things in the middle. Our galaxy is quite typical. So this, again, is a fairly normal part of galaxies. There's a very small, compact, massive, but in the scale of a galaxy, not that big thing in the center. Yeah, this one's called Sagittarius A star, Sag A star, and um, we think it's a big black hole. Um, we talk much more about black holes in the Violet Universe course yep. in the series, so we're not going to go too much into it, but it does look like the answer to the question, what's in the middle of our galaxy is a pretty dang big black hole. <laughs> but remember, four million times the size of the mass, that sounds like enormous, but, but that's still far less than 0.01% of the total mass of the galaxy. Yeah, exactly. So, so what actually impact does it have on our galaxy? Not that much, to be honest. Okay. Um, it has a big impact if you're orbiting very close to it, but out where we are, it has almost no effect. So, so you, know, when, you know, some people think that when the galaxy's rotating, that we're actually on the outside rotating around this black hole, but we're not. No, even this cluster of stars in the middle weighs more than the black hole, and certainly the bulge in 
the, the spiral arms of our galaxy weigh a lot more. So okay. It doesn't really cause orbits to change very much, except right in the centre. That's right, OK. Now, just after we filmed the rest of this, the Event Horizon Telescope Organisation announced that they had succeeded in getting an image of Sagittarius A star, the black hole in the middle of our galaxy. And here is that image. Now, what does this actually mean? Well, the Event Horizon Telescope is not optical, it's not infrared, it's a radio telescope, or to be precise, uh, sub-millimetre, so very, very short wavelength radio. And the benefit of radio telescopes is they can combine telescopes scattered around most of the world to get really sharp images. And so they combined all these telescopes. Here's a picture of all telescopes put together in one place, but they're not in one place, that's the whole point. They're actually scattered all over the world. And they got this image. Now what we're seeing here is not the black hole itself. What we're seeing is gas swirling around it and falling down into the event horizon. But you can clearly see the black bit in the middle, and this fits models of a black hole bending the light from gas swirling around it. So this, the size of that black region in the middle does seem to match what you'd expect from the event horizon of the black hole with the mass we already thought was there. So we already knew it was something very small and very heavy. We now know it's something even smaller with about the same mass and as far as we can tell, the way that radio waves are bent around it seem to fit a black hole with the mass we expect. So I still don't think it's absolute proof there's a black hole here, but it's getting pretty damn close.